It was November 2013, and I remember it like it was yesterday. I set myself my first ever 30-day challenge. And that 30-day challenge was to consume two hours of educational content every day. It didn't matter what type of content. It could have been listening to podcasts, reading books, watching documentaries. It didn't matter as long as it was educational. I was so motivated, so inspired, because I had essentially surrounded myself with the world's most successful people, at least digitally. And it took me about 30 days to completely change my mindset and go from someone who was relatively lazy, relatively unmotivated, to someone who was super driven, super motivated, super productive, as a chain reaction of doing that 30-day challenge back in 2013. And since then, I've done dozens of 30-day challenges is literally just the day before yesterday, I completed a run 5K every day for 30 day challenge. I've written a book in 30 days, boxing every day for 30 days, vegetarian for 30 days. I've done a lot. And every single time I do one, I learn so much and I grow so much. What I've done is I've built a framework called the Fit in 30 Challenge, where I go through the science of upgrading your life in 30 days. And this is one of the most important videos I've uploaded on this channel. So without wasting any time, I'll go over to my laptop and let's get into the framework. The Fit in 30 Challenge 7 Step Framework starts with step one, ideating the transformation. This is where you choose the one thing that will move the needle more than anything else. It is important though to know that your motivation does increase and decrease over time. That's completely normal. It happens to pretty much everyone. However, if you're thinking about starting a 30 day challenge, if you're thinking about making real transformational change in your life, then it's very likely that your motivation is quite high right now. Therefore, it's important that you act and you start one of these 30 day challenges today, preferably at the very latest tomorrow, while your motivation is high, while you're motivated, while you're inspired. If your motivation does drop in like a week or two weeks or three weeks, you'll already have these foundational structures implemented into your life to kind of carry you through these dips in motivation until you, you get your kind of motivation and inspiration back. It is important that you don't procrastinate. And if you really are changing your life, upgrading your life, really making positive change in your life, taking massive action, as Tony Robbins would say, it's really important that you take action fast as opposed to procrastinate and end up not doing anything. When it comes to ideating the transformation, the main thing is what is the one thing that will move the needle more than anything else? right? What is the one thing that after 30 days, you're going to be so proud that you've achieved that? What's the one thing that will move you closer to your main goal? So for me, I'm running a marathon in six months and therefore running 5k every day for 30 days makes sense. And I just finished that challenge the day before yesterday and my running distance and running speed increased so much. My 5k time decreased from 27 minutes and three seconds to 23 minutes and 54 seconds. So that's a three minute improvement in my 5k time over 30 days, which is a big improvement as far as I'm concerned. I was very proud of myself. This is a couple of screenshots from my Apple Health app, and you can see how many steps that I took. I didn't actually hit the 30 day mark. I hit 29 days out of 30. The reason being, you can see here about three weeks in, I had food poisoning and I was basically vomiting the whole day and I was in bed the whole day. And so I probably could have pushed myself and gone out for a run, but uh, I decided to just rest um, because I didn't want to be puking all over the treadmill or puking all over the road. And this second screenshot here is how many steps that I took each month. Uh, and you can see here the month of June, I tripled sometimes double, sometimes tripled my steps. It says they're steps, but it was more running than just walking. But you can see here, my exercise was significantly more for June than it was for the previous months. In terms of ideating the idea, there's a few different things that I could have done. I could have done cycling for one hour every day for 30 days. I could have done swimming 20 laps daily. I could have done 16, eight fasting every day. I could have been learning a language every day for 30 minutes. So there's so many different things that I could do, but it was really going back to that question is what is the one thing that you'll be so proud of achieving after those 30 days have ended? It's worth just writing down all the different ideas that you can do and then choosing that one thing that is going to move the needle more than anything else. And also 
also on day zero or on day one, it is also really important to measure the baseline. I weighed myself on day one. I did body measurements. I checked my fitness levels, particularly my 5K time, which I told you I increased my time or decreased my time, my 5K time by three minutes and before and after pictures as well. For my weight, I dropped 1.8 kilograms in weight over those 30 days. I didn't particularly mean to. I wasn't, that wasn't my goal. I was eating very clean and I increased my exercise quite significantly. Therefore, naturally, I did lose a bit of weight. Step two is building your expertise. And there's so many different ways. And this is really what kicks started my personal development journey in 2013. The idea here is that you're really just kind of learning from the people before you, learning from the world's best, learning from athletes. I'll tell you a little secret. I don't like reading. I read maybe two or three books a year. And I remember Stephen Bartlett on the Diary of a CEO, he asked Simon Sinek, what is one thing that you're a little bit shamed about, a little bit not proud of telling people. And he was like, I've written so many best-selling books, but I don't like to read. And that really resonated with me because I'm the same. I haven't written many best-selling books, but I don't like to read. The way that I learn is visually and through audio. And so I love watching documentaries. I love watching educational YouTube videos or listening to podcasts. When doing the 30 day challenge, I was just binge watching other 30 day challenge. I call it learning from alumni. This is really inspirational. These guys are just normal people, as in they're not athletes. They're not professional athletes. They're just kind of like everyday people. And they're also doing, you know, I run 5K every day for 30 days, zero to Ironman in six months, becoming an Ironman from zero experience. These are so inspirational for me. If you're lacking a bit of motivation, let's say your, your motivation has dropped a little bit here, I really do suggest just binge watching some whatever challenge in 30 days. Step three is designing the roadmap. Now, it's really important that you don't overcomplicate this. You've got 30 days. You don't need to kind of meticulously plan every single day. So this is a very kind of basic rudimental workout plan that I had, I learned that when training for a marathon, you shouldn't be pushing yourself 100% every time you run. Because if I just ran and I wasn't really out of breath and I ran for like 20 or 30 minutes and at the end I could probably run a lot more, I'm like, did I really push myself? Did I, did I really give it everything that I've got? But actually, when running, you shouldn't be pushing yourself every time. There's the call the 80-20 rule where 80% of the time you should be running at a pace where you can talk, meaning you're not pushing yourself a lot at all. 20% of your training should be really pushing yourself and giving everything you've got. And so you can see here, day one is easy run, day two, interval training, day three, easy run, day four, tempo, day five, six, easy run, and day seven, all out run. And that's where I timed myself to see how fast I got. Now, this slide is huge. I think the biggest issue with people and fitness is consistency. We go to the gym and we're lifting heavy weights, but it's like, what's the end goal? right? We're just kind of lifting heavy weights or we're going for a run or we're doing exercise for the sake of doing exercise. But it's like, what's the end goal? And I think having a very strategic short-term goal, mid-term goal and long-term goal is so, so powerful. So a short-term goal could be to compete with a friend or to run 5k in less than 24 minutes. For the mid-term goal, I chose running a full marathon. I've got about five months until I, I run my marathon and that keeps my training laser focused. It means that I'm not just running for the sake of running, but there's an actual destination there. And I think that is really important. It might be to swim a swimathon in 90 days time or to lose 20 kilograms if your goal is to lose weight. And then there's the long-term goal. And this is what really excites me. Your, your long-term goal should really, really excite you because if it doesn't, then I just don't think it's big enough. And for me, it's completing an Ironman triathlon in about 10 months time. I have a, a few business acquaintances that have completed them. And I've always thought, how do you have the time to train for an Ironman, to run a business? Maybe they have a family, maybe they have other hobbies. Like, how do you find the time? And that really inspired me. Like, I think it's important to, when you feel like someone inspires you, how is it specific that they inspire you? Why do they inspire you? And then it's a case of reverse engineering that and then doing that yourself. So you end up inspiring yourself and then maybe 
maybe you can inspire others along the way as well. So short-term, mid-term, long-term goals, I think they're really, really important. But I've just started a Fit in 30 community. And this is basically where we complete these 30-day challenges together. We jump on a call on the first day of every month. And on that call, we brainstorm the challenge that we're going to commit to over the next 30 days. And this can be anything from walking 10,000 steps every day, running 5K every day. It's completely up to you. And we start our own 30 day challenges together. We suffer together. We overcome together. We grow together. And in 30 days, we graduate together. On top of the community, we have everything you need to complete your 30 day challenge in the most efficient way. So we have accountability coaches keeping you accountable. We have progress trackers and we've got the fit in 30 framework, which goes through the exact steps to choose your challenge, how to design your roadmap, how to stay accountable, how to track your progress, etc. If you really are serious about up grading your life in just 30 days, then come and join the community. There's only 10 slots available and this isn't kind of like fake scarcity, genuinely only allowing 10 people into the community for the first and second month. The reason being, I really want to work with you closely and intimately to make sure that you give it everything you've got with your 30 day challenge to have the biggest impact, the biggest transformation in your, in your life. Because this is a very personal strategy, a very personal message. A 30 day challenge completely changed my life over and over and over again. And so I really want to help other people transform their life in 30 days as well. So super excited to get started with that. Like I say, only 10 slots available. Link in the description below. So let's move on to step four, which is staying accountable. You want to start a 30 day challenge, but you feel like you're going to kind of fall off the wagon. You're going to give up in like two weeks or three weeks. Then this is for you. Accountability groups are one of my favorite ways. So you can see here this picture on the left, which is my Apple watch. And I am competing with a friend slash business partner called Milan. At the end of the week, the winner gets $20, but we're both very, very competitive. And it's enough to kind of have that carrot dangling in front of us. And I push just that little bit more. And I know he does as well to try and win that $20 at the end of the week. Like sometimes it'll be like 10 p.m. and his bar will be just higher than mine. So I'll go for a quick 20 minute jog with the dog just to get my bar just that little bit higher. It really does work and it kind of gamifies personal development. It makes it a lot more fun. Another way is joining community groups. I've got a local uh, fitness group. And you can see here one of the guys says, excited to see Mike committed to a not a 2K, but a 5K swim. So I did register for a swimathon in two months time. We'll see how that goes. It's great to have that kind of support and inspiration and motivation in these communities. These are just a few ways that I stay accountable. So posting on social media, if you go to my Instagram, you'll see my stories. I have a personal trainer. I've told my friends, I'm telling you guys, I've joined group classes. I create fitness vlogs. So I ran the 5K every day for 30 day challenge and I documented it and I'm going to be posting it on YouTube. So watch out for that. I also use a fitness app. I use a fitness tracker. I set alarms 5.45 PM every single day. My alarm is going to go off because that's when my training starts. I've got scheduled events in my calendar so I don't forget. I have meal preps in advance and I've done before and after pictures as well. So all of these things together combined make sure that number one, I absolutely complete that 30 day challenge like I said that I will. And the second thing is that I really push myself as much as I can. So I get the biggest transformation. I get the best results in those 30 days. So step five is to track your progress. Now this might sound a little bit obvious, but it's so important to track your progress in the fit in 30 community. We have the fit in 30 tracker. Very, very simple. After each day, you mark your goal as either done a rest day or failed. And hopefully you won't see any of these failed in your 30 days. The idea really is to keep this progress bar a hundred percent. And just as a kind of a side motivator, if you did get a failed, then you're going to see that for the rest of the, the month. So that does actually motivate you to make sure that you don't actually skip any days. This is very rudimental, but this is something that I really like is I just have a blackboard next to my door. So every time I leave, I see this blackboard and I mark it if I've done the exercise or not. One thing that happened though, was that I was forgetting so I would just open the door and I would forget that the, the board was there. So what I did was I, you can see here, I tied a, a pen to the door handle. So when I open the door, I feel the pen. It reminds me, oh, okay, I've got to check the, the box. Step six is reflect and adjust. And this is just a good life lesson in general. You can apply this to any area of your life. The seven step framework is you planning what you're going to do. Then you act. So you're actually doing it. And I recommend every seven days you review what you're doing. You review what works, you review what's not working, and then you adjust the 
accordingly. So one thing that I noticed was I was eating really late at night. I was eating, like I would exercise and I would finish my workout at like 9 p.m. But then I'd be so hungry. So then I'd go and eat at like 9.30 and then I would sleep at about 10, 10 30. And it's probably not the healthiest thing, eating just before you go to, to bed. This was running 5K. So if I'd run my 5K, then I'd tick the box. However, on day 20, I changed it. So I added an extra box and that extra box was, did I not eat before 8 p.m. And if that was the case, if I completed that, then I would tick the box. And step seven is completion. The most important part is when you complete it, then what do you do next? And the idea here of a 30 day challenge is you're building up the habits, you're building up the automated behavior. So after the 30 days, that behavior, that exercise is an automated behavior and you can do it easily. There's a three-step process. Step one, you've got to ask yourself, do you need a few days rest? Especially if it's something like running 5K every day, maybe your legs need a rest, maybe your body needs a rest. Step two is how can you maintain the activity? So even though I don't run every day anymore, I'm still running at least four days a week, which is really easy because I'm used to running seven days a week. And then step three is what's the next challenge? For me, it's really important that you either maintain the same activity that you're doing or you move on to another one so that you're continuing to grow, you're continuing to become a better person. So if you are interested, if you are inspired to completely transform your life in 30 days, feel free to join the Fit in 30 community. I am very, very active there. I'm currently doing a swim 10 laps every day for 30 days. And I'd love you to join me in a 30 day challenge, not necessarily swimming every day, but whatever you want to do, 10,000 steps every day, vegetarian for every day, like literally you can choose. So you really upgrade your life just like I was able to. Again, I've dropped a link in the description below and I would love to see you on the inside.